everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today I have your WWE Royal Rumble 2020 full show review and results for you guys. As you guys know, we're going to run through the entire card, breaking down everything that happened at Royal Rumble 2020. Very excited for this show. The Royal Rumble is my favorite time of the year, my favorite show on the WWE calendar. I'm super excited for this show. You know, uh, the first of the day started off terrible with terrible news of the tragic passing of Kobe Bryant and his daughter in the helicopter crash. Just very, just sudden. And, and terrible and just horrific so all of my thoughts and prayers from my family go out to all of the victims of that helicopter crash it was very terrible a just terrible situation and Kobe is my favorite player of all time so this really hits home with me and just it, it was very tough it was very sudden and shocking and it's still tough right now but uh, I was trying to use this Royal Rumble just to you know clear my head and get my my mind off of it and and just try to enjoy the show the best that I could it was going to be a very difficult time guys but you know what we we have to just focus on the positive things and I'm going to review this Royal Rumble 2020 show for you guys very pumped for it coming in again we did start off a little tough but let's go ahead and dive into this show guys I'm going to break down every matchup let you guys know what happened at Royal Rumble 2020 break down all the matchups give you all of my personal thoughts and opinions on the matches themselves feed you the results and let you guys make your own basis and knowledge based off of what I have to say and whatever the hell but let's go ahead and get into this show guys favorite show of the year let's see what the hell happened at Royal Rumble 2020. So starting off first with the pre-show, guys, we did have our first matchup, a matchup that I really don't know. I mean, I know why we were getting it, but it was a match I wasn't really looking forward to. You know, I felt like they were just going to squash Shorty G, Chad Gable. They did not. We had Sheamus versus Chad Gable here in this matchup. Obviously, Sheamus just turned heel. I knew he would win coming in. He did win this matchup, and it wasn't everything they could do. I think we could get a better matchup out of these two. I think we will get a better matchup out of these two in the future, maybe on SmackDown or something like that. But these guys beat the hell out of each other. Uh, Chad Gable at one point like tore his ear. He had a big cut on his ear. He's bleeding out of his ear. Sheamus had scratches and whelps all over him. Just they, These guys beat the hell out of each other. Very entertaining. Very fun. And uh, it was a solid little football game, man. I really enjoyed it. Sheamus does win, though, which I did expect. But this was our first matchup on our kickoff show to start off 2020's Royal Rumble. The next matchup on the pre-show, guys, was Andrade Cien Almas with Zelina Vega defending his United States Championship against Humberto Carrillo in a singles match here on the pre-show. The second matchup there at the Royal Rumble. And this matchup was pretty good. You know, again, I don't think they went full beast mode on it, but they still had a pretty solid matchup between the two. I knew they'd have a pretty good matchup. Both guys are really good in the ring. Uh, they know what they're doing in there, and this was no, you know, nothing short of uh, what I expected. You know, it was pretty good. Not, again, nothing immaculate on the pre-show of the Royal Rumble thus far into the show, but uh, it, was, it was what it was. I didn't see the end of the matchup. I think I blinked or something. I was trying to get my network set up on two different TVs and it was buffering and all this crap but I do know that Andrade did retain his United States Championship. I did predict this and I am fine with this. I, could, I, I completely agree with it. I think this is the right move. Keep him with the title. Keep building him up a little bit more and you may have yourself as a world champion in Andrade if you play your cards right but Andrade does retain his US title. So our main show of the Royal Rumble guys started off with our false count. Who the hell is texting me? So the main show of the Royal Rumble guys started off with the false count anywhere match between the big dog Roman Reigns taking on Trash Corbin here in the false count anywhere match. And I gotta say, this matchup was pretty fun. I, I did not expect it. I found myself invested in it and hoped to just Jesus Christ let this be the blow off of this match. I can't take any more of these two wrestling. While the match was very fun, I enjoyed the spots. We had porta potty spots included. I think there should have been some shit water or at least the blue like chlorine style water that you clean porta potties with. I think that would have been a nice touch to, you know, drench Corbin in it, but I understand it. You know, he's going to be in the Rumble later. Didn't want to wear two types of gear. I understand. I just think it would have been a nice touch. I love the visual of, you know, the crowd and everything. I love the spots we got in it. Um, the end of the match on the dugout was a very nice touch as well. Uh, the only thing that I would say I gripe about with this match is the uh, the chair shots from Corbin to Roman were pretty weak on the dugout, and then the last spear of the match was pretty weak in my opinion. It just looked weak to me. He didn't really get it full, and the angle of the camera, I felt like if you would have zoomed out and had all of the crowd reacting to it as he was hitting it, would have been a much better visual. But overall, great match. I, I enjoyed it. You know, nothing ridiculously amazing, but it was a good match, and it was a fun way to start the show. Good opener here, and um, I felt like, you know, Roman was going to start the night off with a W, and he was going to end the night up with a W, so let's find out if that was the case. 
So the second match of the night, ladies and gentlemen, was the Women's Royal Rumble match. You know, I had a lot of predictions for this thing coming in. Pretty unpredictable for the most part. You know, we had a couple names here and there throwing around, but for the most part, it could have came down to around four or five women potentially trying to compete for this thing. Psych, I'm completely kidding. We were down to what, Shayna Baszler or Charlotte Flair? I personally picked Ronda Rousey. Would she show up? Let's find the hell out. Starting out first, guys, our number one entrant was Alexa Bliss. Now, Alexa Bliss came out in the number one entry. Bianca Bell Air was number two. Molly Holly was number three. Nikki Cross entered at number four. Sorry about that. Nikki Cross entered at number four. Number five was Lana. Number six was Mercedes Martinez. We had not seen her since the, uh, since the, what was the, 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 whatever the hell classic. Liv Morgan was number seven. She would eliminate Lana. Lana would then eliminate Liv. Number eight would be Mandy Rose. Number nine would be Candice LeRae. Belair would eliminate Molly Holly, but then Mandy Rose would get knocked off the apron, but Otis, out of nowhere from Heavy Machinery, would save her, continuing their little love interest they got going on on television right now. Pretty entertaining moment, I will say. He's saved her twice in this matchup. Number 10 was Sonya Deville. She would eliminate Martinez. Kyrie Sane was number 11. She hit a big elbow drop onto Candice LeRae. Mia Yim would be number 12. And Bianca Belair would eliminate Nikki Cross while using Alexa Bliss's body. And on top of this, guys, she would go on to eliminate Fire and Desire both while holding, or Otis was holding Mandy Rose and she would knock them both out. Dude, Belair was flying all over the damn ring, man, just knocking people the hell out. Bianca Belair looked like a million bucks, guys. You can tell that they have really big plans for her when she gets up to the main roster. Dana Brooke would be number 13 as Belair eliminated LeRae and then Alexa Bliss would eliminate Kyrie Saint. So we're down to Alexa Bliss and Belair. So pretty much all of those entrants that we just got were pretty much for none. Number 14 will be Tamina, god awful. And Bo Bianca Belair would eliminate Tamina immediately. Number 15 was Dakota Kai. Bliss would eliminate Mia Yim. Number 16 was Chelsea Green and Bianca Belair would eliminate Dana Brooke. Alexa Bliss would eliminate Chelsea Green and then Belair would eliminate Alexa Bliss. So literally nothing. We would have Bianca Belair all by herself in the middle of the ring as we awaited the number 17 entrant. And the number, teen, the number 17 entrant would of course be none other than Charlotte Flair. The queen comes out at number 17. Number 18 a big shock. A very big surprise. I was very shocked at this and I was very happy to see well I wasn't shocked but I was very happy I guess you could say to see Naomi in the 18 spot. Number 19 would be Beth Phoenix. Number 20 would be Tony Storm as Charlotte finally eliminated Bianca Belair who set a new women's Royal Rumble record for eliminations. Number 21 would be Kelly Kelly. Number 22 would be Sarah Logan. She would be eliminated by Charlotte. Kelly Kelly would then, uh, Kelly Kelly would then be eliminated by Charlotte. Number 23 would be Natalia. And at this point guys, freaking uh, uh, freaking Beth Phoenix's head was cut open on the back. I don't know what the hell happened, Brad, but her freaking head was bleeding profusely. Like her hair was thick and rich in red. Like you could see it. It was dripping everywhere. It was pretty gruesome. Um, I'm excited to see, you know, what the scar looks like or whatever. I hope she's okay. It was it was very, very it was kind of hard to watch at times like just seeing how bad it was bleeding. Zia Lee would come out at 24. She was kicking some ass. Number 25 would come out at Zelina Vega rocking the shredder attire from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles looking like a baller. Number 26 would be Shotzi Blackheart. Naomi would do the Kofi spot as always. She would be hanging out on the announce table just kind of walking back and forth on those hoes. Number 28 would be Carmella as she struggles to stand. Yeah, ho bag. Number 27 would be Carmella. My bad. Number 28 would be Tegan Knox. Number 29 would be Santina Morella. He would come out and do his comedic stick. So I did predict that Santino would be in the Royal Rumble, but he shows up for the women's instead. And Natalia and Beth Phoenix had a moment with her, him, 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 her. He would then strike himself in the face with the with the Cobra, and he would flip himself out and eliminate himself. And the number 30 entrant, guys, who would it be? Would it be Nia Jax? Would it be Ronda Rousey? No, ladies and gentlemen, it's who we all thought it would be. It is Shayna Baszler. And Shayna Baszler comes out and kicks everyone's ass, guys. She comes out, eliminates Zia Lee, Tegan Knox, Zelina Vega, Gone, Blackheart, Carmella, Natalia, Tony Storm, Naomi. Beth Phoenix would then turn on Natalia and throw her out of the ring. Baszler would eliminate Beth Phoenix, so we're down to Baszler and Charlotte. Charlotte. We all thought that Baszler eliminated Charlotte, and then Charlotte would come back, eliminate Baszler, and Charlotte Flair is your 2020 God in Heaven winner of the Women's Royal Rumble. 
And uh, you know what? Uh, I don't know. I just felt like this match really lacked some intensity. It was just a lot of the points. I mean, there were some good spots throughout. I thought that Beth Phoenix and Bianca Belair were the best parts of the matchup. Um, you can tell that they really are high on Belair. I thought she was the MVP of this thing, eliminating people left and right. Uh, Alexa Bliss impressed me a lot in this matchup. She looked like she was, you know, getting a lot better, it seems. Zia Lee was impressive as ever, just kicking the shit out of people. But Charlotte does win. I don't know where we go from here. Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I just don't know where the hell you can go. I don't think we're going to get Becky and Charlotte again, are we, after a hundred different times? I saw someone mention maybe she'll challenge Rhea Ripley. I don't know about that, but I guess we'll just have to see. But Charlotte Flair wins the 2020 Women's Royal Rumble, and that is what it is, man. I don't know what to say. She does eliminate Baszler. Everybody had Baszler picked pretty much. No Ronda Rousey, no Nia Jax, no Ruby Riot. Very shocking of that. I really thought we'd see one of those three. I really was disappointed in not seeing Ronda. I really wanted to see Ronda. We did not get Ronda, but Charlotte Flair does win, and uh, I guess this is okay. You know, a lot of people are going to say, you know, it's a rehash, whatever. At least she's a credible person. She's reliable and everything like that. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Baszler, so, you know, it is what it is. But Charlotte does win the Royal Rumble for the women in 2020. Next up, guys, we had Bayley defending her SmackDown Women's Championship versus Lacey Evans. And you guys already know I'm not a fan of Lacey Evans. And this matchup, to me, was pretty just skippable, man. It just, it just, I don't know what it was. It wasn't much of anything, to be honest with you. I feel like it was on, and, like, we had a few grapples, and it was over. Like, uh, I, I don't know. It just wasn't something that was very engaging. It was pretty boring, in my personal opinion. Um, and the, the right the, the right woman won. I mean, Bayley did retain her championship. I'm very glad of this. I was a little worried coming in, but Lacey's character as a babyface is not working for me. I don't think it's very good. You know, after she's been calling us nasties for like a year, and then she just all of a sudden is like, don't bully people. When you literally bullied people for like a year, it's like, I don't know, Brad, I can't get behind that character. So it's a little bit difficult for me on that regard. She doesn't sell that really well. And so Bayley, uh, you know, uh, Lacey goes for her little jump rope moonsault here where she bounces from the ropes and then hits the moonsault but she did uh, catch some boots right to the sternum and then she got her tights pulled for the three count and Bailey does retain. I did like the ending sequence there with that. I thought that was beautifully executed. It looked really, really good. But besides that, uh, you know, besides the end right there and then the result of the match, wasn't a big fan of this one. Bailey does retain and Lacey Evans loses another championship match. Next up, guys, we had the Blue Universal Championship match between The Fiend squaring off with Daniel Bryan in a strap match. Now, coming into this, I thought it would be a pretty good matchup. You know, Daniel Bryan's very creative in what he does. The Fiend character is pretty good at what he does inside of the ring. However, I do have one gripe about everything regarding The Fiend, guys. Just at Hell in a Cell, I know this was a while back, obviously, with, you know, the Universal title and Seth Rollins and everything, but that match uh, pretty much killed The Fiend for me. It, it, it pretty much just destroyed the entire character of the fiend the way they made him look and everything like they made him pretty much where now every match he's in it's not believable i don't believe the person's going to pin him because they haven't done near the damage that seth rollins did and he no sold curb stomps and he kicked out of everything and literally made the logic where it makes zero sense like it it really has hurt the fiend a lot in my opinion he he lost a lot of his appeal like it and it sucks it it kind of like makes me just heartbroken over the Fiend character for that reason. But I will say this matchup was enjoyable. I thought that both men did well in this. I love the story they were telling. It just Daniel Bryan taking those strap hits to the back and to the chest and everything like that was excellent. The Fiend no-selling the strap at the end was great. Uh, just the overall story and some of the stuff we got in this match was great. Um, but again, just the Fiend's appeal and everything just really went out the window for me at Hell in a Cell with that matchup. It was that it was that devastating, and it's uh, for one that's really big on logic, for one that's really big on storytelling, and you know continuation of how somebody looks, and you know how much they sell, and how much they, how much damage they can take in a given matchup. You know, it's, I don't know. But overall, I did enjoy this match. Again, I think Daniel Bryan's terrific. I think the Fiend at what he does in the ring, and you know interacting with Daniel Bryan was great and everything. But ultimately, the Fiend does retain, which we all expected. You know, the crowd really did want Daniel Bryan to win and and get that championship. But at the end of the day, it did not happen. But what is next for Daniel Bryan and who is next for The Fiend, Brad? We're going to have to find the hell out. But Daniel Bryan does lose to The Fiend here at the Royal Rumble. 
Next up, guys, we have the Raw Women's Championship match between Becky Lynch and Asuka. This matchup was super fire. I really enjoyed this matchup. I think this is the best match of the night, in my personal opinion, to this point. Would the Men's Rumble beat it out? We have yet to find out here. But this matchup was great. I really enjoyed it. Both women always bring the intensity. This is why these two are my favorite women in all of WWE. They always bring it. They don't care about their bodies. They put their bodies on the line. They bring it. They hit hard. They bring the intensity. And that's what the women's division is really lacking, and that's why... Uh, uh, when these two get in the, when these two women get in the ring, they bring it. That's what this is. What the women's rumble was really lacking. Like bring it, man. Hit their ass. Hit them. Hit the shit out of them. Speed, strength, feel it. Make them feel it. I really enjoyed this match. I like the story that they had going on. You know, Becky could not, you know, give in. She could not let him them throw the match out. She had to beat Oscar. She overcame the odds. I really like the kick to the sternum and preventing the miss from going in the face after delivering the miss over multiple weeks in a row to Becky's face. She finally overcomes Oscar. I enjoyed it. Even though I hate that Asuka lost, I really did enjoy this. And Becky's going to go into WrestleMania with the title. Who knows what's next, but I did enjoy this match a whole lot. Really good stuff right here, bro. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Men's Royal Rumble. 30 entrants on this So You know, the big story coming in was, you know, how was Brock Lesnar going to fare coming out at the number one spot and everything like that. So pretty much how this matchup started, guys, is Brock Lesnar started out at number one. Number two was Elias. He was disposed of, like, really quickly. Like, he was just tossed out of the ring. And to be honest with you guys, I freaking, I, I was, like, trying to record reactions at the same time of, you know, watching the show. So I cannot remember the exact order in which people came out and for some reason it's skipping my mind who the hell was number three but in this rumble we had a ton of people that would come out that weren't confirmed or weren't even talked about and some people were left out like Tucker and Otis were not in this thing Buddy Murphy did not participate Cesaro showed up Carl Anderson showed up Lou Gallo showed up Shelton Benjamin showed up before the matchup uh you know Michael Cole was on commentary and he said that Rusev and Bobby Lashley would not be showing up they uh just, I can't I can't remember if they said something happened or they just weren't in the match I really don't know exactly what the story was, but I mean, Kofi came out there, and Ricochet came out, and Rey Mysterio came out, and they were just getting tossed, man. Every, just one after the other. Shelton Benjamin got tossed, Big E got tossed, Kofi was tossed, like I said, John Morrison was tossed, Cesaro got tossed. I mean, dude, the people were just coming and going as they please, until, until we finally had somebody that could put up with Brock Lesnar, guys. The North American champion, Keith Lee, shows up, guys, and we had some epic clashes right there. I wish he would have lasted long. They had some great back and forth. I really enjoyed both Keith Lee and Brock Lesnar interacting with each other. Out of nowhere came Braun Strowman at 14, I believe, and uh, they all three were beating the hell out of each other. There was no Kane in this match. There was no Kane Velasquez in this match, which was very exciting. I'm so happy they didn't pull the trigger on that. So pretty much Brock just disposes of everybody for the first half of this Royal Rumble. In until Keith Lee comes in, until Braun Strowman comes in, he finally eliminates both of them. In comes Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre comes in, huge Claymore kick to Brock, so Brock is finally disposed of. Braun Strowman's obviously gone. Eric Rowan was also, I think Eric Rowan was number three. Eric Rowan was the number three entrant. He was gone. Freaking Ricochet got eliminated as well. Kofi was gone. So, I mean, the, these dudes were going ham, dude. They were just eliminating everybody. Or but Brock Lesnar was just going freaking wild on everybody. I think he had 13 eliminations, tying the record. And as we would trickle down, guys, we had some epic surprises in this Rumble. I was super excited for the surprises in this Rumble. We actually got Matt Riddle at number 18. That was an epic surprise. But, it, honestly, he didn't do much. One thing I will say is that, you know, we, we were excited for Matt Riddle to be with Brock Lesnar. I was glad to see him, but he got disposed of by Trash Corbin, of all people. So Matt Riddle is disposed of by Trash Corbin. And then at the number 21 entrant, guys, I got you, I believe it was number 21. I got you guys an epic reaction on video, so I'll definitely upload that to you guys. But the Rated R Superstar Edge returns. We did not get CM Punk. Edge did actually return. It was awesome, dude. He looks great. I love the red attire he was wearing. That was excellent. He came out hitting spears and stuff like that. Uh, you know, eventually everybody trickled down. Seth Rollins came out with the AOP at number 30 with Buddy Murphy. So Buddy Murphy did not get his own entrant, even though I could have sworn he was confirmed for this thing. So they're eliminating guys left and right. You know, AJ Styles got eliminated by Edge. That's another storyline we could have. AJ Styles and Edge could be a storyline. Edge eventually eliminated Randy Orton, so he got two eliminations under his belt. I don't know why Ray's still sitting here, but he's gone. Shinsuke was also disposed of by Brock. I apologize for him being there. Trash Corbin was 
finally eliminated. I can't remember if Edge eliminated him or what. Roman Reigns came out, eliminated Dolph. So this is pretty much your final few that were down in the ring, guys. I mean, we had Edge, Drew McIntyre, Aleister Black, Samoa Joe. When Seth Rollins came out, you know, he took out a few people. I think he eliminated Aleister Black. He eliminated Samoa Joe. He eliminated Kevin Owens. So my pick, you know, I said Roman Reigns, but Kevin Owens was also my pick. I can't remember if Randy Orton was here or not. I believe it was the final five, and then they all teamed up on Rollins. They eliminated Rollins, uh, and then Edge eliminated Randy Orton. Maybe it was before or after. Who the hell cares? Anyways, this is your final three. Edge goes out on the apron. Roman eliminates Edge finally. That was disappointing. I knew he wouldn't win, but I still think it was great. He looked great, though. Edge was excellent in this match. I think he could easily give us one more with Orton or Styles come Mania, but this is your final two right here. Roman looked like he was going to win, and then all of the sudden, Drew McIntyre gets the upper hand, hits a huge Claymore kick, throws Roman Reigns out of the ring, and Drew McIntyre is your Royal Rumble winner for 2020. Very fun matchup. I would say the first half of it was just like, why? You know, he eliminated Brock Lesnar anyway, and now he wins the Rumble, so now is he going after Brock? Uh, uh, you know, anyways, like, it was kind of a, doesn't that feel like a waste if he, if he eliminated Brock, and then he goes on to win, but I guess WWE didn't want him to lose, because Roman Reigns would then have to be the winner, and you didn't want to have that. I'm not sure what the deal was there. So, Drew McIntyre does outlast the field of 30, and they actually gave it to him. Guys, I did not expect them to actually give it to Drew, but it was very exciting. I was happy for Drew. You could tell the emotion and everything thing that he's been through since he returned to WWE. I think the story writes itself. You know, he's a much better heel, but it looks like they're going for the babyface aspect. Everybody's behind Drew right here. I'm supporting him winning the Rumble. I'm so glad it wasn't Roman. I just didn't expect him to give it to Drew after all that, you know, they pulled the rug out from under him so many times before. But I hope that this man wins the world title. Been wanting him to be a world champion since he returned, so this is beautiful. Hopefully they give it to him. He could be a top heel in the company, so hopefully they give him the push. But overall, I enjoyed the show. I liked the men's Rumble match for probably the last half. I, I feel like the, the first half, I guess, was storyline, and, you know, he, we were waiting on Brock Lesnar to meet the, the, the movable object, I guess, or the brute force that was taken to get rid of him. I wish Keith Lee and Matt Riddle got better showings, even though Keith Lee looked okay. But overall, it was a fun matchup. We got some cool surprises. I, I freaked out when Edge hit. It was awesome. I'll definitely show you guys the reaction tomorrow. I think that Becky and Asuka was match of the night outside of the Rumble match. I thought that Roman and Corbin was a pretty solid football game, but the rest of the matches on the scoreboard were just met at best. The men's rumble was definitely much better than the women's rumble. So Charlotte and Drew McIntyre are your Royal Rumble winners for 2020. Guys, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy my Royal Rumble review. Please let me know what you thought down in the comment section below. I apologize if I was a little scatterbrained on it. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.